if you have gastrointestinal conditions, IBS, IBD, celiac, GERD, abdominal pain, altered bowel function, all of these throw up flags that there is an increased prevalence, like we talked about, 36 to 88% likelihood that there could be leaky gut present. Probiotics improve leaky gut. Very exciting and definitive scientific proof. Let's break down this recent study that gives us the pinnacle level of evidence documenting that in as little as one to four weeks, probiotics can reduce leaky gut. And if you haven't heard of leaky gut, this is a syndrome that may underlie many symptoms, syndromes, and conditions. So very exciting. Let's break down the study and then give you a protocol. If you haven't heard of leaky gut, aka intestinal permeability, this is when this crucially important membrane of your small intestine is dysfunctional. Now, as this graphic is depicting, in normal physiology, the tight junctions or the cells of your small intestine should absorb nutrients and police out and not allow in particles and, and pathogens that we don't want to absorb. When we have hyperpermeability or leaky gut, this membrane is dysfunctional and particles can leak through, food stuff, bacteria. And on the other side of this membrane lies your immune system and it reacts with inflammation. In fact, we've discussed in the past this very crucial receptor amongst a few others known as toll-like receptor 4. When you have a leaky gut and particles leak through, you can stimulate this receptor. And this receptor will then call the mast cells of your immune system to release their granules full of histamine and other inflammatory compounds. And this is the tie-in between an unhealthy gut and chronic inflammation. In fact, regarding the anatomy of the small intestine specifically, it's 22 feet in length, much larger than your five foot large intestine, ironically. And the absorptive capacity is huge. This is, in the small intestine, where over 90% of calories and nutrients are absorbed, probably because when you take that 22 feet and all of the sort of looping back and forth and the microvilli that increase surface area, the total surface area of the small intestine is 2,700 feet akin to that of a tennis court. So it's massively important to absorb calories and nutrition, but also because this membrane is one cell thick and on the other side at the ready is your immune system. If it dysfunctions, it can trigger chronic inflammation. And we're learning more and more about how many conditions are at least correlated with leaky gut. So we should also ask the question, how prevalent is leaky gut? Because if this is something that affected 1% of the population, this conversation would be somewhat moot. But various data, most namely a 2019 systematic review, concluded that in various symptom or disease states, leaky gut prevalence was between 36 and 88%. So if you have a diagnosed condition or if you have chronic symptoms that are idiopathic, they're not diagnosable, there's no known cause, you have anywhere from 36 to 88% likelihood that leaky gut is underlying that condition or those symptoms. The good news is that a probiotic protocol, again, has been demonstrated to a, a effect and favorably modulate leaky gut. So even though this can be a bit dire looking at the pathophysiology, there's great news in terms of practical things you can do to improve your health. We should just briefly touch on what factors increase risk of leaky gut. Probably no surprise that Western diet, alcohol use, poor sleep, and chronic stress can be a number of risk factors that increase the likelihood of leaky gut. And along with this, we know that things like stress and poor sleep can directly cause another risk factor of um, leaky gut, which is dysbiosis, imbalances in the bacteria. When there's leakage, there's inflammation. Inflammation is not conducive to the growth of healthy bacteria. And you know, here's the inflammation, as we just discussed. If you have gastrointestinal conditions, IBS, IBD, celiac, GERD, 
abdominal pain, altered bowel function, all of these throw up flags that there is an increased prevalence, like we talked about, 36 to 88% likelihood that there could be leaky gut present. Again, this is good news because there's an empowering protocol that we'll go through, but I just want you to understand the physiology so that if you're having symptoms, you understand what might be tied to those symptoms and why it's important to take corrective action. Certain medications can also drive or increase the risk of leaky gut, most namely antibiotics and NSAIDs. Not to say all antibiotics are bad. In fact, certain antibiotics may actually improve leaky gut, but just to put this factor on the board for you to be aware of. And then also, like we alluded to a moment ago, chronic diseases and also aging. So there's a number of factors that increase your risk, but again, there's good news in terms of what we can do about that. And just the final thing I wanna tie in here before we go into the study in question, remember that you don't have to have digestive symptoms in order to have leaky gut. I learned this in college when my gut health really fell apart. However, I had no digestive symptoms. I only had fatigue, brain fog, and insomnia. So just don't make the mistake of concluding, I have no gut symptoms, therefore I have no leaky gut. It's also not to make anyone paranoid about leaky gut. That would also be a mistake because it's very able to be remedied. But just don't assume if you have no GI symptoms, you have no hyperintestinal permeability or no leaky gut. So here we come to the study in question, and man, what a great seminal, pivotal paper this is. So the paper is entitled, Probiotics Fortify Intestinal Barrier Function, a Systematic Review and Meta-Analysis of Randomized Control Trials, looking at 26 randomized control trials in over 1,800 patients. Asking the question, can probiotics reduce leaky gut? The answer is Yes, this is fantastic news. They found that probiotics reduced leaky gut. No surprise, they also found that probiotics reduced inflammation and concomitantly increased healthy bacterial populations. Now, why is this? Well, we discussed a moment ago that when particles leak through on the other side of that gate, weights your immune system. Good, we want that there. But when it's excessive, there's excessive activation of the immune system, which uses inflammation as its instrument to clean up the mess. And this inflammation appears to be discouraging of growth of healthy bacteria. Now, let's go a little bit further into some of what this paper found. Uh, you know, there's a couple of points here that are uh, crucially important for us to tie in. And I've uh, put together this visual for you. So the probiotics were the intervention. They were two types, either a blend of bifidobacterium and lactobacillus. Remember, this is a meta-analysis summarizing 26 clinical trials. So each trial used a different formula, or many of the trials used different formulas. This is helpful to know because it doesn't lead us to say, well, this one probiotic is the special leaky gut probiotic, but rather taking a meta view, a macro view, a big picture view, a summative view, we see that across various trials, two general types of probiotics were used and found to be effective. Bifidobacterium and lactobacillus blends, and also a different type, soil-based probiotics. Now, what did they find? How did they measure the leaky gut? A few ways, directly assessing leakage through actually measuring endotoxin or LPS. And remember that LPS will trigger that toll-like receptor 4 that we've talked about. They've also, or they also measured inflammatory cytokines directly. So they've measured the stuff that leaks through. They measured the inflammatory response that was stimulated by that leakage as TNF-alpha, interleukin-6, and also C-reactive protein. And then finally, they assessed zonulin. And they found probiotic supplementation improved all of these measures, direct leakage of LPS, inflammatory cytokines, TNF-alpha, interleukin-6, and C-reactive protein, and also a reduction in zonulin. But there's a crucially, crucially important finding here that I always try to be very attentive to because I want to save you money and BS, and that is there was no improvement in stool 
zonulin. There was an improvement in blood zonulin. There was an improvement in inflammatory cytokines and LPS leakage. There was no improvement in stool zonulin. Why this matters, not to put too fine of a point on it, but as you probably heard me criticize in the past, the functional and integrated field is wasting people's time and money on stool testing that is more theoretical than it is fact and is unnecessary. Now, to be clear, I am not saying that if you're a conventional gastroenterologist, you're an infectious disease specialist, whoever it is, is recommending a test, you should not do it. But what I am saying is that in the realm of natural, integrated, functional medicine, testing is grossly overused. And here's one very specific data point supporting where my position on this comes from. The fact that the best data point we have to date does not show that stool zonulin changes after one heals leaky gut. So that tells you stool zonulin, probably not useful. Stop testing it. Don't waste your money. So what is the protocol? This study did not assess what the optimum protocol was. They looked at a number of different trials, 26, and they found across trials, the probiotic supplementation improved leaky gut. Separate to that, we have recently performed a comprehensive review of the evidence to see what the best dosages for different probiotics are. So looking macro, looking meta across IBS, IBD, kind of impairment, metabolic function, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, metabolism, SIBO. Here is what we have found, again, according to the research literature, to be the best dosing protocol and duration for the lactobacillus and bifidobacterium blend type of probiotic. One to 10 billion for two to three months. One to 10 billion was actually news to me. I had previously been under the impression that a higher dose was better, but in trying to be true to the science and deliver you the most accurate information, I have now amended my dosing recommendations down to what the best current evidence is showing. Also two to three months, because many trials have found the peak level of improvement is hit at either the two or the three month mark. You will probably notice, and you should probably notice, a symptomatic response before that, but the optimum dosing time may be two to three months. And this is likely because it takes time for bacterial populations to shift, for leaky gut to be reduced, and for the full, I guess, therapeutic benefit to be yielded. Now, for this other type of probiotic, the soil-based, there's actually less data trying to determine what the optimal dosing protocol is. However, what has been used across most of the studies is a dose of two to six billion CFU per day, again, for two to three months. So this is your protocol. You can pick one of these formulas. You could use them together. This study did not look at them used together per se. So one is probably sufficient. If you want to have a more powerful probiotic, you could use two at the same time. And here are a few formulas for you. Here are the two that we use in our clinical practice. Here are two others that are readily available online. And just to give you an idea of cost, uh, here's a table breaking down the cost. One thing I want to flag here, uh, and I always try to give you sort of what I use and then a few things that are able to be bought you know, easily online, just so you have some options. The one thing that flagged for me here was this 100 billion CFU really probably more than you need. In fact, we are even taking steps to modify downward the dosages of our lactobif blend to hit 10 billion given these recent findings. So the point here to take away is that the higher dose doesn't mean better. And this is good because it can reduce cost. And then two other options for you here. You're looking at about 20 to $40 per bottle to get anywhere from a one to three month supply, depending on the one that you're using. The soil-based probiotics are less expensive. So if you're on a budget, that's probably the better place to start. So to make sure that this is um, really clear, I would not recommend, based upon this study, testing stool zonulin. Should you test blood zonulin? Well, maybe. It has been shown in this study that pre-post intervention with probiotics, you will see improvements in leaky gut as measured by blood zonulin. Does that mean clinically you have to do a baseline 
blood donulin, and then repeat the test? I don't think so. Now, this is more so my inference, my speculation, but because we know that symptoms generally correlate with leaky gut, I think it's much more practical to keep treating the individual until you hit the fullest symptomatic resolution possible rather than serial retesting. Why? Well, because the testing isn't going to tell you anything about how to better treat the person. In fact, someone could argue before this study was published, well, the best way to treat leaky gut is with anti-inflammatory herbs, glutamine, what have you. This study totally refutes that. This study found that probiotics lead to a very successful improvement, reduction of leaky gut. So the point I'm making is, in functional GI care, the best path, generally speaking, seems to be to continue to use various therapeutic approaches until you hit your symptomatic target, rather than thinking that you need to do serial repeat testing, go back down to lab court, back down to Quest, oh, still have symptoms, still have elevated zonulin, right? So it's just going to keep going through the same clinical process anyway. I'm not saying everyone has to do this if you want to be very analytical. Sure, you could do repeat zonulin stool testing along the way. I'm sorry, zonulin blood testing, not stool testing along the way. Um, but it's just one of a few different changes that will make your care more expensive and more arduous or make it more expeditious. So again, my opinion here, not published, but we recommend continue to experiment with various therapeutics until you hit the symptomatic point you're trying to hit. Then if you want to retest, I think optional, very likely if you have less symptoms, you will have improved zonulin. Uh, so just my perspective there to make sure you don't get overly pulled into lots of testing, which can get very expensive and very time consuming. Okay, well, again, really exciting research here, and I hope this helps you with how to use probiotics. If this has been helpful, please subscribe, like, comment, or share. This really helps us bring science-based information that's practical and efficacious to more people. Alrighty, this is Dr. Michael Ruscio. Hope this helps. Talk to you next time. Mm -hmm.